Hello everyone, back to you today's fur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's fur video. Uh, so day 10, we'll take around the 4th of April. We'll extend out beyond that. Next to the GFS and ECM ensembles. Maybe around around a couple of weeks. Going to have a look at CFS V2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. I should get on that for you very shortly. Just say about the first video release today was the uh, JMA seasonal update. So that's looking at the uh, potential weather anyway for uh, the next three months, April, May, and June. Um, ahead of Saturday's uh, first seasonal rounder for summer 2000. And 21, and uh, we will also, or oh, we did also release the European outlook. So uh, have a look at that and see what's going on uh, in terms of the uh, weather for the next week, ten days in detail uh, across uh, Northern Europe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Uh, right, so uh, we're very close now to 10.8k uh, subscribers. We're going to put on around over 18 subscribers, I think, to get ourselves to uh, to get ourselves to 10,800. So, if you aren't yet subbed to our channel, please can you give us a sub. Uh, and uh, don't forget to tell your friends and family to subscribe as well. We've been at 10.7k for several weeks, but we are closing in slowly, 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 grinding in on 10.8k. The wider target is 11k, of course, but that's going to take us uh, a month or two to get to that, I think. Maybe, um, you know, by the start of the summer, we might get to 11k. But uh, but 10.8k is like the next mini target. Got to put on around the 18, I think, to get to that. So thank you so much, everybody, uh, for, for doing that, uh, for, for Gaz. Thank you so much uh, to all of you. And you can become a channel member for Gaz Webbies as well. So to subscribe to the channel is completely free. Uh, there is a little, little bit of confusion about that, I think, uh, 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 times. But, but people think they have to, to pay to, to subscribe. You do not need to pay to subscribe to any uh, YouTube channel. So, so uh, you know, that's completely free. And thank you so much for doing that. If you want to take it to the next level, you can become a channel member. And you do that by clicking the Join button. Can you believe it is nearly a year since we started opening up the channel to channel memberships? Uh, channel memberships. Uh, that was in April of uh, 2020, I think. So, uh, almost a year uh, of channel membership. Thank you so much to all of our channel members. When we get to the one-year anniversary, I'll probably shout out all of our uh, lovely, lovely channel members and give them all... Uh, you know, a, a shout out for the support they have given over the past year. So thank you so much to all of you. If you would like to become a channel member, then all you do is click the join button um, that you see there uh, on the uh, Gazza YouTube homepage and also uh, with all of the videos. Click the join button, take it through to another page where you see what benefits you get from becoming a channel member and you can sign up on that page uh, as well. There's, uh, there's a, month, there's a month, once a month uh, channel members live stream and, uh, and exclusive access to uh, various other uh, bits and bobs. So have a look at it anyway and, uh, and and see what you get from becoming a channel member. Thank you so much to all of Gazweb's channel members. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for doing that. Right, let's move on. And I'll start off by having a look at section and temperatures. I'm CT is uh, currently standing at 6.5. That's an anomaly of 1.1 uh, degree above average. It's provisional to uh, yesterday, the 24th. I don't think that's going to alter uh, a great deal from there. It'll probably tick down slightly over the next uh, couple of days. We are in for a cooler couple of days, Friday and Saturday. Uh, and then in TA5 next week, it'll probably start to tick up again a little bit. I think you're going to finish up somewhere sort of uh, mid-sixes. Mid Probably. So you're going to finish up around a degree uh, above average. Follows on from February, which is also uh, mild and average. That's one and a half degrees above average, despite containing the coldest week of the winter, the second week of February. And uh, January was uh, was a solidly colder than average month at 3.1. There is more cold weather on the way uh, for Easter, probably. So more about that in a second. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next couple of weeks. Let's just refresh the page. There we go. Uh, looking at Northampton uh, today, local to me. So the red line is a 30-year upper air temperature average for Northampton. We're starting off slightly above average at the moment. We are going to see the upper air temperatures becoming cooler over the uh, next couple of days. As I say, we're going to have a little bit of a cold snap on uh, Friday and Saturday, but then from sunny to the open next week, it goes very mild, actually. We might lift the temperature into the mid to upper teens Celsius down in the southern half of the country, though northern areas will be cold. From around Wednesday onwards, we get a cooling trend, and quite evidently, uh, you know, <laughs> it looks like it's becoming really quite cold there 
as we get through into the first week of April. That's this period just here, and possibly staying cold on average even into the second week of April. That's that period just there, although that's much more extended range. But yeah, this doesn't like quite a prolonged sort of cold spell setting up, doesn't it? There's certainly below average spell anyway. Uh, but, but setting up there, and overall, it does always over the next couple of weeks are going to be below average, despite this uh, warmer period just here. That looks like it's relatively short lived, and given it's cooler than average there, and then all this period is below average too. Does look like a relatively cool uh, couple of weeks coming up, doesn't it? Precipitation wise, it's going to be a regular uh, precipitation coming through. Um, so, so obviously. This uh, wet weather just here is going to be associated with the push-up in the temperature and the drop. Uh, this precipitation just here is all sort of showery stuff within this cold and uh, this cold air mass. So, so that that's probably going to be like heavy showers. Uh, that, that could be of rain, hail, sleet, maybe snow thrown in as well. And because of the time of year and the strength of some uh, thunder and lightning, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> can't be ruled out either. So it does look as though we're in for quite an active period of weather. Temperature anomaly. So on 25th of March, we're saying the make we're going to be a little bit cold on average for Scotland, near normal to slightly above average for England and Wales. I would expect these to probably start trending colder in the coming days. Precipitation anomalies from the 25th of March to the 2nd of April, wetter than average for northern and western parts of the country but a little bit drier than average for more southern parts of the country. Latest wind flow map from EarthNollSchool.net shows that low pressure is well and truly in control of the weather today. You can see the way the, winds, uh, the wind direction is coming in from a west or southwesterly point. So uh, the low pressure is up around Greenland, Iceland, and in come those west to southwesterly winds. And they'll be uh, bringing, uh, you know, heavy showers, long spells of rain. And eventually, uh, as the wind starts to come out of Greenland, uh, colder temperatures as well. So UK May, it's only for Sunday. Low pressure is in the North Atlantic, so we're uh, going to have an next batch of wet and windy weather coming in off the Atlantic on Sunday. Into Monday, we're drawing up a long fetch southwest, so it will turn very mild into the south, but they'll be aware of it that kind of gets stuck through the central sway of the country here uh, with pulses of rain running along that front. So, so quite a bit of wet weather for the central sway of the country. Um, but mild down in the south, temperatures could well be up into the mid to upper teens Celsius. Uh, through to Thursday. Again, high pressure is over the continent, low pressure to the north of Scotland. Again, we've got a weather front stuck somewhere in the middle, so there'll be a front through here. So the side of the front, it will be very mild with winds up from south southwest. On the north side of the front, though, it'll be quite cold with the colder air digging into Scotland. And along that front, there will be quite a bit of heavy and persistent rain. It all sort of sorts itself out by Wednesday as the front and the uh, low pressure clears away eastwards. A ridge begins to build in the North Atlantic. That brings the first push of cooler air in from the northwest. Uh, and then beyond that, it's a case of whether we take that high pressure up to Greenland, set it up as a northern blocking feature. If we do, we'll start to drag in much colder air from the north. Uh, GFS uh, midnight run looks like that. So, uh, again, wet and windy on Sunday with low pressure moving in from off the Atlantic Ocean. Very mild southwesterly is on Monday. Tuesday also looking uh, very mild, down in the south anyway, cooler and more showery up in the north. In between, uh, we'll have a band of heavy and persistent rain. By Wednesday, the GFS midnight run takes a high pressure up towards Greenland, starts to pull some cooler air in from the north. But it's really through Thursday and Friday that the high pressure properly sets up over Greenland as a northern blocking feature. And then we start to open the door to those much colder north or northeasts. So by Easter Saturday, again, the GFS midnight run uh, bringing in like a cold, or, a, or for the time of year anyway, uh, a very cold uh, northeasterly type wind. There's minus 5 cells isotherm plunging through the country, minus 10 isotherm is into northern parts of uh, Scotland. As it's a Sunday itself, day 10, Sunday the 4th of April, looking cold and potentially a little bit on the wintry side, really. Got masses of northern blocking uh, around Greenland at 1,050 uh, millibar. We're bringing in a, a cold or, or, or an unusually cold East to northeasterly wind, um, and it's an unstable air mass as well. So there'll be heavy showers, rain, hail, thunder, sleet, snow—you name it. 
could all be going on uh, next uh, weekend over Easter. That's the upper air temperature chart, uh, forecast chart for Easter Sunday, and it does look cold. Beyond that, into our extended range, we keep wind in from the east or the northeast, so it remains cold actually through the first week of uh, April. It's only late on, right at the very end of the Jeffers midnight run, that things begin to turn milder and start to get more of an Atlantic influence from the air. Let's have a look at the precipitation type forecast uh, based on that uh, midnight GFS run. Uh, from weather outlook. So, of course, initially we're talking about rain. We get our first push of cooler air in from the west by Friday into Saturday with showers turning wintry. But then over the weekend, so far next week, it does turn uh, a lot drier. Uh, or it does turn more towards rain, I should say. Uh, we're through into the next week, outbreaks of rain becoming stuck through this central swathe of the country. So that could be a bit troublesome. It's a, like a stationary front with ripples of rain running along it, so that could be a little bit troublesome. Uh, and then it's colder, of course, in the second half of next week, and that's when we begin to bring wintry showers into the north and the east, see how they're piling in from the east, so so plenty, this is Saturday 3rd of April, plenty of uh, wintry showers coming in from uh, the east, and, and maybe like the suggestion of, of a longer spell of uh, snow potentially there, some time around east sunny through the central sway of the country, so that's going uh, like set some of Scotland to Northern England to Wales on east Sunday itself. That could be a more general area, uh, but sleet and snow just generally looking quite wintry, doesn't it? As another uh, more general area of snow further southwards there on Tuesday, the 6th of April, just after Easter, affecting Wales and the Midlands. Um, and so that's quite heavy, so you've got the, the pinkos in there, so that will probably be enough, despite that, it's eight, that will probably be enough recovery of snow through some central parts of England or Wales. So so very very wintry looking charts, aren't they? Probably a little bit overdone. Um I doubt there'll be that as much quite as much snow as that sort of suggests. But but it does look like quite a wintry uh outlook there, doesn't it? With the uh, midnight GFS run. Uh, let's have a look at the uh six Z, see how that compares. So again we've got low pressure uh bring unsettled weather initially um, there will be rain involved with that, quite troublesome rain from the central swathe of the country. By Wednesday, the high pressure pulls out into the middle of North Atlantic. In come those cooler uh, north, 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 northwesterly winds. The high pressure begins to move up towards Greenland and Iceland. We start to put in a proper sort of north, northeasterly as going into Easter. This is Good Friday, 2nd of April, minus 5 cells iceberg, plenty south, minus 10 cells iceberg into Scotland, uh, and then we're all in those unusually cold uh, northeasterly winds as we go through to Saturday, the 3rd of April, again looking uh, cold across many parts of the country. Uh, Easter Sunday, uh, 4th of April, we've got wind in from the east, it's a cold easterly as well, there's the upper air temperatures looking uh, cold through many parts of the country. In the more extended range with the GFS 6 Z, we do eventually start turning things milder. This deep area of low pressure forms to west of Ireland brings probably quite a lot of heavy rain and also milder winds from the southwest. So the GFS 6 Z does turn things milder into the second week of April, but certainly over Easter, uh, we have really quite a potent cold spell. Let's have a look, shall we, at the uh, precipitation type forecast based on that GFS 6 Z and see how wintry that one uh, looks. So again, uh, again, we're at weather outlook again. We're starting off with rain and wintry showers packing into the west on Friday into Saturday, and then into next week, this front gets stuck through the central wave of the country early on, Bring out breaks of rain to like Northern Ireland, so Scotland, Northern England, North Wales could be quite troublesome through uh, Monday and Tuesday. Even as it's Wednesday, there's an suggestion of a little bit of wintriness in with that precipitation through like Wales and into Mills. I doubt it will amount to too much, but just a suggestion in by Wednesday, the air is beginning to go colder. All of that wet weather pulls away. Uh, by Thursday uh, next week, and in come those east north eases. They're bringing in plenty of wintry showers with them. Uh, as well, you see, there could be a mix of rain and sleet and snow, and probably quite a lot of hail uh, with that as well, and maybe some rumbles of thunder uh, as well. That's Easter Sunday, so looking quite wintry in the east with, with wintry showers into the east, and, and it lasts into Easter Monday. 
as well. This will be the coldest ESO we've had for several years, I think, if this uh, verifies. There we go, much more towards rain into the second week of April as the weather starts to get milder. GM looks like that. So, again, plenty of wet and windy weather coming up over the uh, weekend, oh, part of next week. Then things start to go cold with GM taking the high pressure up to Greenland Iceland again. Opening the door to those much colder north or northeast, they're bringing in the minus 10 cells ice firm into Scotland and into Northern Ireland uh, as well. I mean, down comes the minus 10 uh, right way through the country with the GM. This is over day, it won't be as cold as that. We won't push the minus 10 cells ice firm into southern England, or I would be very surprised if we did. Uh, but it certainly is the idea that things are going to get colder as we head towards the Easter data. We remain in those cold east or northeasterly winds, GM. And the ECMWF looks like that. Again, plenty of rain uh, through the central swathe of the country uh, in the open next week. Then all that clears away. It turns colder from the north as we go into the second half next week and into Easter. Bring down a cold north or northeasterly wind. There is a risk of wintry showers packing in with those northeasterlies as well. Into the uh, Easter weekend, this is Saturday, 3rd of April. Again, we remain cold with winds in from the east to the northeast. And up to day 10, winds are like east to northeasterly. So we keep in a cold and blocked scenario. This is the precipitation type forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So again, initially we push a band of rain through the country in the next 24 hours, and then we have wintry showers into the west uh, over the weekend. So about next week, the emphasis goes towards rain, and for the south, relatively mild temperatures, but this wet weather is, uh, you know, troublesome through the central swathe of the country. During the open next week, it all clears away, and then we bring in the colder air from the north, so everything starts to turn wintry. Heavy snow showers into Scotland, wintry showers into Northern Ireland, some coming further southwards uh, as well. And we just keep things looking pretty wintry, gone past day 10 now, keep things looking pretty wintry as we go up to uh, day 10. So, uh, yeah, definitely a suggestion is there that there's plenty of wintry weather on offer as we go through uh, through through the Easter weekend. That is day 10. And that right, which is the 3rd of April. Right, let's have a look at uh, the options on the table. The ECM ensembles today for day 10. Now, hold the CFS and then we're done. So these are the options that are on the table. The ECM ensembles today for day 10. It gets us to the 4th of April. 17 members of the ECM ensembles have low pressure to our east and uh, south east. High pressure is blocking to our northwest. Winds, therefore, will be coming in from a, a cold north or northeast direction. Looking quite cold and wintry at day 10 with that one. 14 have high pressure just out to our west. So that's probably quite cool, but not as cold because there's more of an Atlantic influence uh, with that. 13 with blocking uh, close to Greenland. Low pressure to our south. Winds in from a cold east or northeast direction. That includes the operational as well by the way, and then seven uh, with high pressure near Greenland and a mid-Atlantic ridge combined with trough low pressure over Scandinavia, wind uh, flow and jet stream is lined up northwest to southeast. That could be quite a cold option as well. Most of those options are looking cold. Uh, really, in uh, day 10. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got to get us to the 9th of April. 12 members of the ECM ensembles still looking pretty chilly, really. Low pressure uh, over and to the east of the country. Winds in from a northerly, northwesterly direction. 12 just here have low pressure to our west and a ridge to our southeast. So that's going in, in the same direction as the uh, GFS 6 said at the very end. That's drawing up something milder from the Atlantic, but is unsettled. 10 have high pressure right out of the country. It's not going to be too bad. That would be probably quite chilly by night, but, but spring-like by day. 10 just here, or another 10 just here, the mid-Atlantic ridge up to Greenland. Trough of low pressure over country. That one looks pretty cold and wintry as well. And then 7 uh, with high pressure to our west, low pressure to our east, and down comes those cold northerly winds. Many options still favouring quite cold weather into the second week of April. So that's V2 lastly. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down into wheat pairs. The first wheat pair takes from the 25th to 31st of March. The coming week have low pressure to the north and high pressure to the south. Winds will be in from a westerly direction. It will be unsettled. We go through to week uh, two, which is going to be the 1st to 7th of April, covering Easter, of course, blocking around Greenland and Iceland. Just about managing to pull in something colder from, from the east. But with this ridge extending down through Germany into Italy, 
it's almost keeping the wind in from like a southeast direction. But but I think there's just enough there to suggest the wind is probably going into the east or the northeast with the uh, CFS V2. Week 3 is the 8th through to the 14th of April. High pressure then centres uh, around Green and Iceland. Winds again probably coming in from uh, a cold northerly direction with that one. And then week four is the 15th to the 21st of April. Low pressure is around Iceland. High pressure is around Spain. And we're averting back to probably more unsettled, but also milder and more showery. Uh, Westy type flow, that will probably be a resumption of classic sort of spring and also April weather. April showers, uh, for example. If you enjoyed this video, please can you smash the like button, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We haven't got put on too many more to get to uh, 10.8k. So so please give us a sub, tell friends, family, anybody else who subscribe. Thank you so much uh, for doing that. And drop a comment and let us know what you think about all of this. It looks very interesting, doesn't it? It looks like we're in for a cold Easter here. Still way off. It's like uh, just over a week away. So we may see... Um, uh, we may see, like, the Mars backing off from, from like, the extent of the cold. Anyway, I, uh, I think the GEO is definitely overdone with that minus 10 isotherm. Um, but nevertheless, it looks like, you know, minus 10 getting down to the south. But it, it, nevertheless, it looks like we are in for quite a cold Easter. Probably going to be our coldest Easter for quite a few years. So, so all very interesting. I'm going to keep you updated about all of this at uh, Gaz Weathervids, of course. I think that's it for today's video. Tomorrow, I have Jeremy Fry. I have a 10 to 14 there. Another Easter update for you tomorrow as well. So keep checking back for all of the updates. Uh, but for this one, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And uh, keep checking back because we're going to keep you informed about what's happening with this Easter. Right, that's all for now. Thanks for watching.